What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Pillars of Eternity. My name is Splattercat and I'm happy to have you here today as we hang out for a little bit and play this wonderful, wonderful little RPG. I've been having a blast with it and even though, like, I think the thing, I misjudge this game for this reason. Most people aren't going to want to play this. The Healing Hands, Minor Spellbind, Restore Light Endurance. I'll have to figure out what that does in just a moment. Either way though, the problem, what the hell are you doing? Get out of there. Oh, my cat. Okay, so anyways, down below the desk, my cat. I've got a trash can underneath my desk, and my cat was busy knocking it over so that he could eat the remains of old Chinese food out of it. So there it is. That's what was going on. So anyways, as I was saying, I think the problem with this series is that it's difficult to appraise the view counts for it and, like, how many people are watching because most people see the first couple videos and, like, oh, I gotta play this for myself. And so then they're probably gonna resist the urge to watch me play the game until they beat it themselves and then come back. So in that case, I do want to keep this running and it will probably be the kind of, like, higher quality replacement for... Oh, what's going on? Okay, so we got a whole bunch of... No, don't let him just run by the lines like that. Stop and fight him! Fight him! Here, flip him around. Force him. There we go. Make him turn around because he's attacking the back of our dear friend Adir right now. And that's not okay. I'm going to figure out what those healing hands do too in just a moment. So I'll check those out in a second. There a few more revenants down. We're actually almost done with our research on revenants. That'll be pretty cool. And so as that finishes off, we'll be able to know what makes him tick. Or it makes them fall over and die, more importantly. But as I was saying, it's difficult to appraise a series like this because this could probably go up to a couple hundred episodes just like it did when we did Dead State. However, this game seems to be a lot more fun and have a lot less of the endearing issues that Dead State has. And so honestly, I it'll be easier to keep it going, in my opinion. We're no longer in stealth. Can we go down into the water? Oh, we can. We can actually trudge around in the sewers for a little bit. Just in case you want to get some stickies in between your toes. Wee! Everybody loves toe stickies. Who doesn't love toe stickies? Let me let my formation sort of realign here. Alright, so we got a door right there. That leads to what looks like a slightly nicer area. Oh. oh, dude, why would you do that? Uh. Alright, so... What are you even talking about right now, man? You're just like rambling, like making up poetry and comp like comprising raps and shit while we're walking around. Whole bunch of money right there. I bet you there's something hidden in here too. There's gotta be. If there's not something hidden here, I'll be really, really surprised. Oh, that's gonna be, this is where more of the Kickstarter backers are gonna be enshrined. So this is like their own little awesome personal area where they can break the fourth wall in peace. Yeah. It's like we got a mega revenant over here. I'm gonna try and hold this line real fast yes. so that nothing breaks through to mess with any of our other little characters. Oh, Wizard, get out of the doorway, you bastard. You're causing problems for me right now. For you, I want you field triage. That's not what I wanted. I want this song right here so that we can deal damage. I want to see what's up with that song so I can get a feel for it. And then do you not do that on your own naturally? There it is, and I just want to watch the enemy sort of like tick down health and kind of figure out like how that works. They are resetting his attack like every four seconds over on this side. Let's drop a couple AoEs up in here. Boom! AoE! You get an AoE! You get an Oh good, look, they're just gonna walk around behind us. There's a little bit more loving. Turn her around and keep that one from running around too much. Got engagement targets and other stuff like that, but this combat is obviously... A little bit beneath us at this point. Just trying to get down here for the extra cash and treasures so that like by the time we get out of here we got enough front stocked money to where we don't have to stop off and like work on anything in the future. He should be getting his class unlocks right here too. I don't know what it's gonna God, look at that brow right there. My family has that brow. I am afflicted by that large caveman brow. It's a family thing for me. We all have it. And so I can definitely sympathize with Durant's enormous forehead. We've already got a guy who does mechanics, so maybe a guy that does survival or something? I don't know. There's not enough skills to really, like, split them out. You're gonna have overlap either way. He's gonna get all the same stuff that our other character got, and the ability to cast a few more spells, which is pretty nice. Put everybody into stealth mode, because I think there's probably gonna be traps. Yep, that's what I figured. Alright, level 4 trap difficulty. We got the fine brigandine down in here. Seems kind of cool, a little bit heavy. It's got a reset time on it that's a little bit aggressive. I could probably give it to a warrior or something like that, but giving it to anybody else would be a bad idea. We've also got the fine great swords. So that's actually not going to be that useful. We'll get rid of it. Gouge marks and scratches line the edge of the lid. Looks like there's a few more down in here. 
few more people ensconced, I suppose, or I don't even know if that's the word that I'm looking for. Either way, we got all the traps and we got the extra XP for it, so that's pretty cool. People looking a little bit sleepy right now. What can we unlock this with? Nothing, actually. There's no way to unlock that. Okay, well, let's continue our exploration. I'm on a hundred, I'm on a hundred percenter. I have to do this stuff, otherwise it sits and it nags at me and it bothers me. I am raring to go to get down into the actual sort of pillars of dungeon, pillars of eternity mega dungeon or whatever. I'm really, really excited about going down in there and checking stuff out. But for right now, I'm trying to get some of the main stuff done. I don't just want to breeze through the main storyline because I feel like that would cheapen the game because there's so much like side content that you can get down with and so I really do want to experience as much of it as possible especially since it's legitimately engaging like there's always something happening in this game so you can constantly like move around and fiddle with stuff what the hell is this? Didn't like climb back up a well? hmm well then looks like there was a back entrance we could have come through I guess that was the whole point of that dungeon. You could have come through the back room and then done like a super secret stealth mission if you wanted to. I don't think there's going to be any traps or anything worrisome around here. Although it does appear as though the fish are biting up inside the pond just in case you're into angling. There are a few more of these plants down here because you never know when you're going to need them for random stuff. Clear out the fog of war. I guess had I thought about anything but rushing through the front door, I could have done better right there, but oh well. It is what it is. Either way, it culminated in that giant combat with Radrick, so what are you going to do about that? Go back through here, okay, looks like the top line, alright. I wanted to go talk to Kolsch real fast. Now that Kolsch has taken over, I feel like he's probably going to be the gateway or the keeper of the new quest. The thing that we need to work on next, whether it's getting rid of like the Hollowborn Curse or whatever it is that's stopping off this area. I do want to make sure that this area is fine and ready to go before I leave. And then once we get a lock in on that new quest, what we'll do is we'll leave this place, we'll go back to the inn. And once we're in the inn, we'll sell off all the stuff that we've been looting. Additionally, what did those gloves do? While we were looking around. I wanted to see. They said they had an affinity for doing something. I don't know. He's got a two-handed pistol right there. I think that it was a deer that had a bonus to that. You got thugging weapons. I guess I'll drop that in right there so that he can use it whenever we get the chance. It looks like it's got a very, very slow reload time. So we probably won't get to use it very often. But I'll keep it just in the odd chance that there are enemies around that we want to stay the hell away from. Because they've got like auras or whatever. Make, make our life a little bit easier. Forgive me, friend. There's much to do, but we will not forget what... Okay, never mind. I guess he's just going to be a stop-off. He's got nothing going on. Let's go back to town, and hopefully maybe that'll trigger some events. We're going to sell off some of this loot so that we can get ourselves a couple thousand more little bits of coin while we're around. We'll stop off. We'll stay at the inn. Then we'll talk to Durance because I've noticed he's got a rather pulsing little thing above his head that means that he's raring to talk about whatever concept or, you know, random little snippet that he wants to talk about. It's probably fire, something related to fire or burning or... Him being judgmental about the way that I perceive the world, or me being a whore, or something like that, I don't know. He seems to circulate around all of those sort of tired paths that he's already talked about before. Over here on Gilded Vale, take 14 hours to get back and in over there. That's fine, everybody should be nice and exhausted by the time we set foot in town. We'll take a little bit of time off, we'll rest for a little while, sell off some stuff, and we'll be good to go. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you, gotta, you ever moo at cows? I don't know, I do that. I do it to sheep too. Like there used to be a lot of sheep where I went to college. You're like, Meh, like make noises at them, and then the sheepdog would come out and try and fight with you. It was crazy. The sheepdog was like a million tons, and it was one of the most terrifying animals I've ever seen in my life. It looked just like a sheep. It would actually hide in the middle of the herd, and it looked just like a sheep because it was all woolly. And then when you're like, Meh, and you made like noise, or you would like bump into the gate or whatever, it would like lose its mind and come over like, Bleh. just like this giant gangster dog that wants to destroy everybody. We'll sell our stuff first. I'm going to keep the mail armor. I don't think there's really that much of a need to have this much plate mail around or this many robes. And so I'm going to get on with my bad self in selling all these goodies. Some sabers and stuff laying around. All right, we got that right there. Don't really want the fruit. Kind of just clogging up my inventory. We've already got 880 ready to go. Oh my god, we're about to make so much money. Sell off traps because I never end up using them and so they just sit in my inventory. Scrolls might be useful for later, and that was something I should have thought about before I ran out of resources in my previous fight. Get rid of those. Do you sell lockpicks by any chance? Or is that something that I just have to loot, like, along the way? Looks like the answer to that question is going to be a new. A big old resounding no. Okay. Well, I'm not going to sell my dog, because I kind of like him. Trade that stuff first. And then we'll go all in on some of these books. 
We've got the scroll note, not interested in that. We'll go, something weird is happening right now with my mouse or with the game where it's been like locked into a position. The fine scepter, I don't really care about. The wand we can get rid of. As with all that, we've got multiple spell rights tomes and they all have the same thing inside of them, so we'll get rid of those. 672 more to go. Let's get rid of a couple of these shields. Spell rights tome, we already have that. We've got a fine spear, we've got the larder door. Probably get rid of a whole bunch of that stuff. Basically a lot of the extra copies and things that we have laying around. Like stuff that we really, really don't need a lot of. And so we got pole axes and all kinds of goodies in here ready to go. Obviously, probably keep a couple swords around. I don't know. We can just go through and sell stuff. It's not that big of a deal. Like I could get rid of a lot of stuff here. And still not really be hurting that much for new gear. I think you probably want to stick to like the fine stuff as well. I don't know. Just go through like that and just like mash out some of this lesser loot. We've got a fine quarter staff right there. Nobody to use it, unfortunately. We're actually not going to make that much money as far as I can tell. I mean, it's all relative, I guess. We're making a little bit of money right here. An extra shield that I'll probably hold on to. That seems to have cleared that out pretty well. We'll trade that all in. That's going to put us up to almost 8,000 coin. And then I'm hoping this is where the real money is going to come in, so... A lot of the extras. I'm going to hold on to some of the plate mail, but it looks like we got a lot of it down there at the bottom, so obviously within reason we can get rid of a lot of this stuff. God, so much armor to get rid of. A couple of plate mails, right? Let me get one plate mail back, and then we'll go after the padded armor is going to be pretty useless to me. Leather armor we'll hold on to. We'll hold on to a couple of chain mails. A couple of robes couple of scale mails and a couple of leathers just some random stuff that we could throw around in case we have to gear somebody who's got like an odd skill set we'll trade those in that's going to put us up over 10,000 we got a bunch of helmets and things that we can sell in here so I'll probably keep some of the more unique stuff and get rid of the really really common stuff like these little helmets right here and so the acorn hats we'll keep a couple of the cloaks we'll go through with the hoods yeah sure why not skip to the front right there Get rid of a whole bunch of those. Keep a couple of the acorn hats. Keep the chain mail and anything unique. And so that looks like it'll be decent enough for us to store over. And then over here, we got a couple of books that we can get rid of. And so let's unload those. Now that we've gotten rid of all literacy, happiness, and learning inside of our party, we're fairly wealthy right now. We got the cash. Got the cash to make things happen. If we wanted to recruit new people, it's a thousand. I mean, that seemed like it was so cumbersome earlier, but now it's not actually that bad. We've got a lot of money. Let's go ahead and rest up while we're here as well. I'm going to take the big ball in room right now. Let's go for the Deerwoods Pride because we can do that because we got cash coming out of our ears. And it's not because there's just wizards in town that keep doing overhash tricks that have been done way too many times in the past. It's because we got stuff to do. And now Durance's conversation. Thought I felt your rise on me. Now come the words. I had questions I wanted to ask you. If doubts and curiosity plague you, you're skinning your knuckles on the wrong door. How could you skin your knuckles on a door? Unless you're like punching it, I guess. But when I knock, I use kind of like the side of my hand where it doesn't hurt where I've got cushioning. I don't know, I saw something strange. You were sitting by the fire and I saw a great light from your staff. Talking about another man's staff with him in private. Tell me what you saw. It was like a flash. An explosion and a rushing of air. Incredibly bright. It is the light of the God Hammer you saw. The God Hammer? It was a weapon of Deerwood's people. A symbol of their independence. It saved the Deerwood. What do you know about it? It brought the Saints' War to an end. Knocked a god from his perch. There are few that would deny Aeothis overstepped. The God Hammer reminded Aeothis of it. You saw its light because I helped shape it, give it life, and release it into the world. Once seen, its glory is almost too bright to be believed, and too bright to be forgotten. So wait, you helped build the God Hammer? There were twelve of us. We fashioned the weapon, drafted plans for it, prayed for guidance at Ashfall, and it came to me there. Each of us were given a staff made from the forest of black trees around us, glowing with embers and fire far greater than this 
branch you see now, it felt as if the staff was Margren's own finger, guiding my hand, guiding the other eleven, the shadows of the twelve who would come to stand on the bridge to stop Aethys. The shadows of the twelve? Even in that stand, there was a ritual to it. For the twelve that stood on the bridge, there were a dozen shadows cast, a dozen faithful of Margren, her fiercest supporters and shapers of the Godhammer. Durance rests the staff in front of him and the flame atop it, curls for a moment, the light flaring slightly. It splits into a ring of flames one after the other until a dozen is met. As twelve held Aethys fast, we twelve unleashed our prayers and let the Godhammer fall. Then it blossoms brightly once and resumes its candle intensity. In the aftermath, the shadows seem sharper in the vicinity as if they have edges and you blink to clear your vision. Durance is still staring at the tiny candle-like flame intently. Shadows cast by the fire of the Godhammer, perhaps. And we shared their fate as well in time. Now the spine of the Deerwood is marked by the Godhammer. Marked by Magrin. So wait. What did you mean, shared their fates? Not all deaths come with stilled breath and stilled heart, or other stilled passions beneath the waist. Some deaths come from silence. The connection we once shared with Magren, after the light of the Godhammer, it was not the same. It was as if we'd lost our senses, and sense of purpose as well. Instead of victory, being welcomed, there was silence, within and without. Not many can claim to have killed a god. It is less a heroic tale than you would think. And such a death, it changed our faith. All faiths, I expect. Doubt followed, and the world changed. I do not believe Margren was pleased by what we had done. Why? The world is broken. The wheel stilled. There is sickness in the world's heart. Perhaps the price of crossing a god. It's kind of like crossing the streams. When you cross gods, nothing good's gonna happen. Crossing two gods. Even as Margren shaped our hands, perhaps we carried her will farther than was allowed. Just as Widewind did. Saint Widewind. Mortal arrogance to match mortal arrogance. Yet if the world had changed, then I sought to change with it. If I had forgotten some of Margaret's teachings, I would find them again. I would make her see me again. What did you do? I remembered Margaret's teachings. How reminders on the flesh were more important than the death of a vessel. And I wondered if killing Aethys, if that had simply set him free, had it allowed him to escape his punishment and be taken on the wheel like a mortal? As I stepped from the now blessed Godhammer Bridge, I thought of Ashfall. I thought of the War of Black Trees, wondered if I needed to be burned to find myself again. That is Margaret at her heart. At least that is my hope. These are the doubts that befall me. What happened when you returned to Ashfall? The road to Ashfall is long. Gives one time to think. And if you think long enough, you do not go home. I left without telling anyone, with only the robes I wore at Halgot, my staff, and my name which is long buried. Of my fellow eleven craftsmen, disciples, I know not what happened to them, if they suffered the same doubt as I did. But it was underserved. It was wrong. We had done all that. Oh, had asked. Grab victory from defeat and... and... You feel as if your god has betrayed you. There is something about being used and cast aside. Perhaps Widewen himself felt it. There at the end, when the hammer struck. To be the proof that your god is hollow as the vessel it inhabits. 
I tried to find purpose and avoided all contact with other Magranic priests, did not seek the walls of Ashfall, and sought to make amends to my god through actions. I joined with the Purges for a time, and not long after came the first signs of the Hollowborn. So many crimes, trespasses, violations. The Salvation. Animancers were another sickness born of the Saints' War. A relapse of innovation, of desperation to heal what we had caused. All seemed worse than before the bridge, not better. And as years passed, the world became even worse still for the victory. Then it would seem Magran's silence is your trial. Sweat collects in the sooty creases of his forehead and runs down his ruddy cheeks. It drips from the tip of his nose. His mouth moves, but his utterances make no sound. He is, for once, at a loss. Feeling your gaze, he quickly composes himself, wiping his forehead with the back of a dirty hand. Hmm? Huh? Worship the whims of some fickle bitch, and you'll never be more than dirt beneath her feet. Worship what she worships, on the other hand. Take her fire for your own, and her esteem comes on its own. Of course, by that time, you no longer need it. Trial and transformation, sure as Durance taught. There's the Durance that we've been missing on the back end of that. He's back! Hooray! Durance glares at you and staring into his eyes gives you the feeling of peering over the edge of a great cliff. You think to put the coals to my feet, but what's burned once will never burn again. These talks are your trial, Watcher. You cannot deflect the truth to one who has already been purified by it. On whose authority? Anyways. The Trials of Durance. Continue to get to know Durance. Well, that worked out for us pretty well right there. I'm not really interested in a lot of the lore talks. I just wanted to get to the bottom of his character because I enjoy exploring the backstories on some of these guys and gals. It really is sort of a fun thing. And I apologize if people feel like that's a waste of an episode where we sit for like 10 minutes just talking to a character. But that's what I would do in my own time had I the moment to do it. And so... Off we fly. What should we do today with the remainder of our time? Well, we have a little bit of time left. I think it's probably a good idea. I don't know. I just don't know. There's a lot of stuff to be done. Let's go to Copper Lane, I guess. And we'll try and eke out a couple more quests that we can go out on into the wide world and see if we can see some of the lovely little green fields and, you know, poppies and bunnies and all those random things that the universe puts in front of us. The Western Barbie can be constructed. Okay. I cannot keep up this pace. Looks like we are tired again, and we have two notifications. Resolve Attack. Bleak Hollow Bandits from the Northern Wilds have been reported crossing the plains east of Kaednua. They'll be at our doorstep any day now. So what happens if I manual resolve? Oh, we have to travel to... Okay, well, let's go defend our house then. Although we're kind of tired right now. This might not work out so great. What happens if I don't resolve it out of curiosity? Does something terrible happen? Our character's a little bit nerfed right now, so I don't know if this is going to work out so great. This might be the sort of thing that like we're walking into an ass whooping just because we haven't slept in like three days. I could have just slept in my house, I know, but I'm feeling lazy right now. And so we have a battle? Eh, manual resolve it. I don't know. I want to see what happens right now. I'm concerned. I'm vaguely concerned that this requires my attention. Doesn't look like anything too nasty. On this side, let's give ourselves... Oh, I don't know. What do we have? Prayer against restraint. The pillar of faith we could drop on somebody. That'd be kind of badass if we could AoE somebody with the Pillar of Faith. So dope. Let's wait for a second and we'll do it later. Yeah. I'm going to have them go out to meet with the battle. Have him be a stopgap right here for that bandit. I think we're going to go through these guys pretty quickly, though. I don't think that there's going to be anything here that's really going to challenge us or cause us to give second pause. Move him in. We'll have him fire at some of the enemies in the back. Oh, well, he took a little bit of damage right there. It's like a little bit concerning. Not that much, but eh. Barbarian took a little bit of a clip to the side of the head. I figure we'll go for a big wounds right there on her. Yeah, let's go for a big wounds right there. Let's see if we can patch that up real quick because I think she got maybe critted possibly. I don't know. Let's see if I can get this bandit taken care of. Strike in the back. Actually, he's staying up pretty well. I don't know what that guy's made out of, but it's definitely not destructible with an axe. He's got three points ready to go. 
I actually kind of want to do this thing right here. Oh, it doesn't affect my allies. That's good. All right, so knock them back a little bit. Cause some problems. Make these dudes hurt and sting a little bit. Make them sting like they ain't wiped in a while. And then on that side, we'll get going. Is he actually going to swap into a weapon that actually hurts? Or that attack wasn't much. I expected more. So can I leave like a defense force here? Is that part of the thing? Oh, it's going to tell me now. I guess. Oh, we don't. Okay, well, I guess it just teleported me back then. Don't know what to think about it, but it looks like it's more stuff that we can just sort of like throw into the stash and sell off later. A nice little bit of cash to come along. I'm going to rest my characters one more time. I don't know what I want to do in the big city. The big city is going to be sort of problematic because when you got to the big city in both Baldur's Gate and Neverwinter Nights, it was kind of like this extended period of just like wandering around until you found the people that gave you the quest that you wanted. And so there was a lot to miss, and more importantly, there was a lot to do. And so I think that wandering around there is going to be a little bit of a time-consuming process, but I am interested in taking part in it, so... Eh, we're taking hole in it, I guess. I mean, I don't want, like, a piece of it. I want everything. Let's sleep for a little while, all in the same bed, obviously. We'll get the next Western... To the Deerwood as well. What do you make of it so far? There seems to be trouble brewing. That seems to be a constant in these parts. If it isn't trouble with the Glen Fathoms, it's trouble amongst the Dear Woodens themselves. I find it strange that a people surrounded by enemies should tear at each other so. They're a rather refreshing bunch otherwise, I think. I've whiled away an hour or two talking to the regulars in one tavern or another, and everyone from the merchant to the servant has an opinion to share. Okay. Well, anyways, my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Pillars of Eternity. I look forward to seeing you all in future episodes. Take care out there, everybody, and hi-do!